nerds! Hi yogis, Carleen Rose here and welcome to a Nerdy Yogi YouTube channel. Today we are going to be yo doing yoga poses for our feet. Uh, feet get a lot of use of course during our daily lives, our yoga practice, everything, but they don't necessarily get a lot of love. So today we will be focusing on stretching, strengthening our feet, ankles, calves, um, it'll help stretch and strengthen the knees a little bit, so all of that's going to work together to give our feet some love in. Um, you can do this really anytime, good, especially after a long day of walking. Like I said, it's just great anytime that you want to give your feet a little bit of extra care since they do so much to support the rest of our body. Uh, so to start though, we'll come into a mountain pose, um, just a simple Tadasana mountain pose. So think about really grounding into the earth here with the balls of your feet. So you've got the ball joint under your big toe, little toe, and then the heel of your foot. It kind of is like a trifecta for this solid foundation for your feet. So you want to really think about grounding into the earth with your trifecta and then lifting up, lifting up your arches and using that energy, lifting up your uh, shins, up your inner thighs and extending that all the way through the crown of your head. So now we've got really tall Tadasana from the ground all the way up and just reach your fingertips towards the earth. And from here, we can start doing our Mula Bandha breath. Um, it's great practice to do the Mula Bandha breath, even if we're just kind of focusing on our feet. We want to keep our breathing good, too. So inhaling here, you're going to inhale to the base of your belly, expand in all directions, and exhale, squeeze everything in and out. Exhaling through the nose. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale here. Exhale. And really think about keeping that breath through this entire flow. Uh, so as you are focusing on your Mula Bandha breath, we can start to activate our toes a little bit more. So think about lifting your toes up off of the mat. That's really going to energize your arches and your feet, and then just placing them back down. And also when we're doing this, try not to lock your knees. That's actually going to be worse for you. So keep um, your knees loose, you can have a slight bend in your knees, and focusing on that breath and lifting your toes up as you inhale and as you exhale, letting the toes just place back down. Inhale, lifting your toes. Exhale. One more time here, inhale. Inhale, toes come back to the earth. Now I'm going to turn to the side so you can see this next part. You just stay where you are. So now we've got, we're firmly grounded into the earth. We've got our toes loosened up. We've got energy rolling. Now we're going to come into a chair pose. So as you think about chair, you really want to sit back into your heels. You don't want your knees coming forward over your toes. That's bad for your knees, your toes, and your ankles, which is the opposite of what we're focusing on today. So sitting back into your heels, you don't have to sit very low. You can sit up here, whatever's going to be most comfortable for you. But think about sitting into a chair and your arms are going to extend out in front of you. And from here, you can even lift up your toes. A lot of the weight, pretty much all of your weight is going to be in your heels and then the balls of your feet again. So you should be able to lift your toes in this position as well without losing your balance. Here we're going to take some movement through our, our chair pose. So I want you to sweep your arms behind you, coming to airplane arms. You've got really bent knees here, leaning forward, trying to be perpendicular to the earth. And then from here, you'll extend your legs and see if you can come onto your tiptoes. Very nice. It's hard to balance. <laughs> and then you'll come back into your chair. So reversing the motion, sitting back into your heels, arms extend above you into your chair pose. Exhale again, flying back into your airplane and lifting up, coming onto your tiptoes. We're starting to challenge our calf muscles here and try to do slow controlled motion. So not momentum, we're controlling this movement, which is why we're getting so much heat and activation in our feet and our lower bodies. Keeping your Mula Bandha breath going. 
And when you're doing this lift too, again, don't lock your knees or extend them. You can keep them loose, keep a slight bend. Bring you back into your chair. A couple more times here, a few more rounds of this. It's so good for you. Slow, controlled motion and movement. Really focusing on activating your feet and your ankles instead of just rushing through the movement. Last one here. Bring back into your chair. See if you can sit down just a little bit more. Remember you can to lift your toes. You should be able to move them around a little bit. And from here, we're gonna come into a forward fold, but really bent knees. So basically sitting basically all the way towards the earth and then extending your legs coming into a forward fold stretch. Again, you can keep a bend in your knees here. You just wanna find that first edge of stretch. We're not, you know, heating up our legs too much where we're gonna be super flexible maybe. So finding that first edge of stretch Sending the spine long as you come into your fold. And from here, coming onto your fingertips, we'll do that lifting motion again, but in our forward fold position. So we got our fingertips here for support underneath our shoulders. And think about just lifting onto your tip toes. You might get a little bit higher lift since now you're not balancing as much. You don't have as much weight and then come back to sit. You can even bend your knees, do a little cat-cow motion here. Very nice, so just a little bit more work for the calf muscles. Getting into your knees a bit as well, but knee strength, not knee strain. And if you need, you can use yoga blocks. If you want to bring the ground up a bit higher, you can also use a wall if that is going to be easier for you. And again, all of this can be done with super bent legs. So even as you're lifting up here, if it's better for you to keep your knees really bent, do that as well. This is your yoga practice, so you definitely want to listen to what your body needs. And last time here. Awesome, coming into the forward fold again. Just take a moment to stretch. You can even pedal out your feet a little bit here. Now from here, plant your fingertips firmly onto the earth, strong fingertips, strong palms. You're gonna start walking yourself back into a downward facing dog. Now this is a great pose for your feet and ankles. As you can see as we're pedaling out our feet or walking the dog, we're getting a great stretch in our feet, really warming up the calf muscles, backs of the legs. So this is a great one that you do in every yoga practice or potentially most yoga practices at least. And from here, you can take it a little bit farther if you want. You can flip one foot over and get a bit of a stretch on the tops of your foot and then switch sides. That can feel nice too. After you've taken a few breaths to pedal out your feet, stretching one more than the other. Then from here, bending your knees, wave your spine long, create some space for your neck and shoulders and then you can start pressing back into your heels and letting your heels, again, we're not, probably not super warm, so just letting your heels naturally make their way towards the earth, stretching out the backs of your legs. And then from here, let's come onto our hands and knees. We're gonna walk ourselves back to sit on our heels. So a little anticlimactic, but it's good for you. <laughs> so from here, we have our toes tucked under and we're just sitting on our heels. This is a good stretch for the bottoms of your feet. It can be a little intense if you do it for too long or too deep. So you can sit up here, you can grab a pillow or a block. You can use that to kind of take some of the pressure off if this is too intense. Um, 
modify it, you know, as you need. But we'll take a couple of moments here to just sit in this pose. So I do want you to tap back into that Mula Bandha breath. Sometimes we forget about it when we're moving. So think about inhaling to your belly, warm and wide in all directions, and exhale, squeeze everything in now. Inhale here. Exhale, squeezing everything in and out, exhaling through the nose, big sound. Inhale. Exhale. Very nice. Now from here, fingertips in front of you again. We're going to rock back onto our heels. So now we're in that higher kind of tip toe position like we were doing earlier in our mountain, but we're in kind of in like a roly-poly bug pose, I guess. And then from here, just exhale, letting your heels go towards the earth. They don't have to touch. We're just working on our stretch and strengthening here. Moving back onto your toes. Exhale, heels towards the earth. Coming onto your toes. You might be starting to feel this in your calf muscles. And as you're doing this, remember to ground into the earth with the balls of your feet. I know we're coming up to the t our toes. We're not on top of them, obviously. It's not point ballet or anything, but the edges of our toes, we're getting a good stretch. But you do want to, especially when you're here, ground into the earth with the balls of your feet and use that to lift up. Last one here. See if you can stay on your toes for a moment. Walk yourself forward, come back onto your knees, and from here, ooh, untuck your toes. That should feel so nice. <laughs> so from here, now we're sitting on the tops of our feet, getting a little bit of a stretch. You can walk your fingertips behind you and stretch out your chest. And then from here, only if it feels good and you can support it, you can lift one knee up at a time and get a bit deeper stretch right on the tops of your toes, um, kind of the opposite of the stretch we were just doing where we were bending at our toes, now we're stretching them out. And then same thing here. We do want to be careful when you're doing this stretch and make sure you have support doing this. Kind of walk yourself forward to come out of it. Very nice. Now from here, coming to a seated position, we're going to extend your legs out in front of you. We'll come into a Dadasana forward fold seated. So from here, slight bend in your knees, fingertips behind you, wave your spine long. Then you can start to fold yourself forward and you can start extending the knees a bit straighter. Again, we're not super warm, so we don't want to worry about having our legs too straight, anything like that. Just first edges stretch focuses on our feet anyway. It's finding that first edge of stretch, stretching forward just a bit. And then from here, you can point and flex your feet. And you can do this sitting up tall. That can make it easier. Just pointing and flexing. Working your ankles and your calf muscles. You can even rotate them, circling one way and the other. Should feel nice opening up all of your bones and muscles here. Come back to pointing and flexing. And then just letting your feet kind of be natural, pointing towards the ceiling. You don't have to strain, just let them hang out. Coming back to that forward fold position. And if you want, if you can reach without compromising your spine and rounding out like that, then you can hook onto your toes. Maybe get a bit deeper stretch in your feet. You can also bend your knees a little bit more to get a bit more of a stretch in your calf muscles. Very nice. And now from here, kind of our final pose, we are going to come onto a belly shavasana. So fold around, lay down on your mat. We'll first start by with one final stretch. So we did a lot of work on the backs of our legs. We'll do one quick stretch for the front of our legs, getting our quad muscles. So left arm in front of you, kind of, kind of a 90 degree angle to support you. And then from here, hooking onto your Grabbing your right foot with your right arm. Um, you can use a towel or strap 
if it's too far. Basically, we want to get a stretch in the front of our legs and maybe a little bit the tops of our feet. Doing it on the ground though, so that we don't have to worry necessarily about balancing. Can help create healthier alignment for the knees. Now I'm quite flexible, so obviously I can pull my foot pretty close to me. Uh, you, you know, maybe you're hanging out here. If that's where your stretch is, that's where your stretch is, and that is awesome. Definitely hang out there. The one thing you do want to think about is not winging your foot one way or the other, really pulling it right into your gluteus maximus. And then we will switch sides. Good stretch for the knees too. Again, as long as you're keeping that alignment, if your foot is winging out one side or the other, then you're torquing your knee. And obviously you don't want to do that. Knees were not designed to twerk, so we'll keep them in good alignment, get a good stretch. Awesome, and then from here, uh, just take a moment to kind of lay in your belly Shavasana. You can rock your hips back and forth. You can tuck your toes under. If you want a little bit more of a stretch while you're hanging out here, whatever is gonna feel good for you. Think about laying down with one ear to the ground for a few breaths and then switching sides. And take a few moments just to let all of that stretch and strengthening we did for your feet and all that energy kind of travel through the rest of your body. Um, if you do have like a lot of uh, foot pain or you're walking around a lot, you can also use um, like a tennis ball or a yoga ball or lacrosse. I mean, any ball kind of around this side. They even have specific foot massager, um, basically little balls with kind of massaging things on them. Any of that kind of stuff is really good for your feet. You can roll it on the bottoms of your feet. That will help work out any knots that you might have. They feel really good. So, um, you know, check that out too if that's something that you think might be good for you, but definitely keep working on sending your feet some love. They definitely, <laughs> definitely need it, and I'm sure they love it and give you love and right back. So I hope you enjoyed that flow. I do look forward to seeing you again on the mat next week, so make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. That way you get notifications when the next video goes up, and of course get on the League of Nerdy Yogis email list. Link is in the description. That way you get exclusive content that I have for you there. Namaste.